Hello, my name is Jakub Škvára and I'm going to talk to you about Polymer. Uh, I am going to compare Polymer with other libraries, uh, Angular and React. So, at the beginning, can you please raise your hand if you have heard of Polymer before? Or if you have used Polymer? Okay, great, right? So, uh, I would like to start with what Polymer actually is. So, I would compare Polymer to jQuery because jQuery helped us to build up, uh, web applications in a much, much better way. So it was quicker and uh, it helped us to work with DOM. So Polymer helps us to build uh, applications with web components. Web components is a standard. It's W3C standard. And it's implemented in Chrome uh, already. So with Polymer, you can start using web components. It means you can use your own HTML elements. And so let's look how you can use it. And you, are, you have probably seen your DevFest application. It's built with Polymer. So you have seen how it works. So you can use it for web applications. And that is a, an example. Uh, of using Google Map element. So you can see that it's really easy to import your own HTML elements. There is a link tag, and there is, there is a way how to render the element. So it's really the same as using any other element like video tag or input or something like that. So you can use Google Map element and you can set latitude, longitude, and zoom level. And on, th on the right side, you can see how it looks. So this is the place we are now. So it's really simple. Uh, if you have used uh, Google Maps uh, on your web page, you know that you need to use CSS files, JavaScript files, and include all this stuff. And this is really simple, so you can see you can you just in two lines import your element and use it. So this is an example how the most basic Polymer element looks like. So you are defining a DOM module element where you name your element my element. You can import CSS styles. You can also use SAS, LESS, or any other uh, compiler for CSS. Mm. And you can see that there is a template tag, which is the actual, uh, actual content of the element. So we are just rendering in my element text. And we need to define a name of our element again in JavaScript. So we, d we name it my element. Mm. Right, so why you should use components? It's really simple, because components provides you encapsulation. So for example, uh, as you have seen on the Google Map element, you have everything in one component. You have CSS, you have JavaScript, and you don't need to care about the, the rest of the things. You just use the element, and the benefit is that mm, if your element uses CSS, as Google Map does, it doesn't, um, it doesn't have any impact on the rest of your page. So for example, if you want to um, change CSS of your inputs or of your, of your elements, it is encapsulated uh, for your element, and it, it doesn't change the rest of your page. It's also really really easy to configure the elements. You can use the same HTML attributes as you use nowadays. So you can use, um, you can define your own attribute cl attributes and you can just pass some parameters as we have already seen with the Google Map element. You can, you can set the latitude, longitude and so on. You can define your own uh, attributes. Elements are also compos composable. The, this is the actual uh, content of Videotech. 
It's HTML5, Videotech. And if you enable Shadow DOM in your Chrome developer tools, you can see that there are other elements. It's just a simple divs. Uh, if you have seen um, video element, that is the actual content, the video. And underneath, there is a uh, menu bar with, uh, with vo volume. You can pause the video and so on. So it's actually, there are inputs and there are also divs for it. And it's all encapsulated in one element with uh, if separate CSS. So you can use your own elements inside your elements. So you can use your own inputs and build your own form and use it with just the uh, one element tag in your page. And another benefit is that the components are decoupled. So for example, if you have two separate components, there is a way how to communicate between each other, but you know how exactly you need to specify how to send the message from one component to the other, and it's more clear that it wouldn't affect the, the other components because there is only one way, and you can specify how it should communicate between each other. So you can use um, many components, many different components, and don't, don't care what each does because it, they all have a specified way of communication. And now I'm, I will be talking about polymer advantages. Probably the best advantage is that the speed of the el uh, speed of the development because there is an element catalog. You have uh, you have a set of components uh, built from b b by default by Polymer team. There are uh, there are elements for material design. There are Google Web components, for example, the Google Map. Uh, there are other elements. There are elements for offline support and stuff like that. So you don't need to build this stuff. You can use just the, the pre-built uh, components. And you can also build your own components and share it on the web, and other people can use it. So you can, on the internet, you can find elements from other people. And there are elements, for, for example, for screen readers and some advanced, like, um, mm, uh, really difficult forms and data grids and stuff like that. And you don't need to build this. You can just download the tag and use it in your application. You can also extend the normal form elements like input. So that is an example of paper input element. So you can define what's the, for example, you can create your own email element, which will have the validation in the element. So you don't, you just specify you want to use email element, and you don't need to write a special validations in your JavaScript. It's bound in the, into the element. There are other examples like search, input, and stuff like that. Yeah, this is the Google Map element, so you can see that you can specify a rectangles or you can specify a path from one direction to, to the other. So you can use Google Map element and other element that will add these layers to the Google Map element. And also you can use the mat material design. Uh, you know this design um, from your DevFest web page. It's, it's, yeah, it's used by Google products, uh, especially on Android. It's a new way how to define the elements that can be used on m mobile, on web applications. And now uh, we move to, to the other part of my presentation. I'm going to compare Angular, Polymer, and React. So uh, can you please raise your hands if you, if you have experience with Angular? Yeah, cool. And with React? Yeah, cool. So if you have experience with Angular, you know there is a way how to define your own elements. It's called Angular Directives. 
So you can see that you can create your own My Hello World at Element. Uh, and Angular has its own way how to do this. It's called Directive. And you can specify um, template for the, for the element. And you can also specify a scope where you can pass your variables that can be used inside the element. Uh, if I would compare Angular to Polymer, uh, first of all, Angular is MVC framework. So it means uh, Angular specifies the term of, um, term of service, term of provider, term how to define your own factory and stuff like that. So it defines how you should build your models, how you should specify your data, how you should configure the whole application and stuff like that. So it's MVC framework, but Polymer is just a view library. So it just cares how to render the elements, how to build the HTML, and doesn't care how you should build your models. It doesn't say you should use service, you should configure it in this way. It just says, hey, um, let's extend HTML elements and that you can build your own elements. So it's just a component library or view library. Angular has scope. It's a way how to say that you want to uh, render your models in your views. And Polymer has encapsulation, so it, th there are problems with the scope because the scope can change the behavior um, in your controller. So if you change something in your component, in your directive, uh, it, can, uh, it can change the rest of your applications. For example, if you use the same scope in, in, the sa in more components or if you save the scope for more things, uh, but Polymer, uh, uses encapsulation, so if you define your models in your component, it can't affect the, uh, the other components, so everything you change in your component uh, stays in the component, so it, it doesn't have the problems with the scope. And also it uses Shadow DOM, it's, it's the thing that, it's the W3C standard, how to how to define the, the encapsulation of HTML elements. It is the same thing as we have seen uh, for the video element. So it's, it is already used. And um, Polymer uses polyfills. Uh, it's, polyfill is library that um, emulates the behavior of the browser for old browsers. So, for example, if your users have Internet Explorer, which doesn't uh, have uh, Shadow DOM, Polymer uses its own um, JavaScript library that emulates this Shadow DOM, so you can use it in, in each browser. But if, for example, if Chrome implements the Shadow DOM, uh, Polymer knows it and it doesn't include this library. So it's a native in Chrome. And Angular has also its own uh, templating system. Uh, as we have seen before, you Mm. You can define your own elements, which is called directive, but you can also um, specify this directive with class names or with, um, with uh, comment stack in your HTML. And Angular works that it, co it goes through this HTML and it compiles it. But Polymer, again, it uses uh, W3C standards, uh, how to know it is um, your element, so it will know it and it will just insert it on the right place. And now we are moving to how to, how to benefit from both of these libraries. So you can use Angular and Polymer together. So if you are already using uh, Angular di directives, as we have seen for your own elements, you can, use, you can think how to use Polymer. Uh, yeah, first of all, I would like to mention that Angular 2.0 will use the same, uh, same way how to specify components as Polymer does. Angular 2 will use uh, Shadow DOM and stuff like that. Uh, but as you know, Angular 2.0 is not stable yet. It's in alpha version, but it will use the same concept. Uh, 
the problem with cooperation between Angular and, Re uh, and Polymer is that um, it all, uh, they both use their own way how to know if, you're, if you have changed your model. So uh, if you change your model in Angular and try to render, render it in Polymer, it, it, it works without any problems, it is fine. But if you change your model in Polymer uh, element, Angular doesn't know that you have changed the, the, the model from Polymer because it do doesn't work the, uh, the opposite way. So there, are, there is a solution for that. There are two libraries. There is a bind Polymer and ng Polymer elements libraries. They are actually directives uh, for Angular and you can use it as, as you can see there. So you probably know Angular directives so you can use ng model and it will all render the same model. And this actually is the Polymer element, right? This is also a Polymer element. You can, ex you can see that you can extend the default input tag. So there is a way. So uh, if, you, if you are already using some kind of components, you should probably try this. And maybe it might work for you. So for those who doesn't know React, React is another uh, JavaScript library. It has also its own way how to define components. So uh, as, you as you can see, you can define hello world element again. Uh, and the actual element is there. We can see uh, several things. For example, there is some strange syntax that in JavaScript, you are returning some kind of HTML. So what is it? It's called JSX. It's a way how to write, in JavaScript, how to write HTML-like looking elements uh, in JavaScript, but it's compiled into JavaScript native objects. So you, you don't need to write this in this syntax. You can just write your own uh, JavaScript, plain JavaScript objects but it's much easier to write things like this because it, it actually renders as the HTML elements, so there is no, there is no need to comp uh, write it in JavaScript and then compile it. So you can write these things. You can see that there is a difference that the class name has a capital N, so, the, so it's, Actually, it's a JavaScript. Instead of class, you write class name because class is a reserved word in JavaScript. But uh, yeah, you can have the benefits that you can render these elements and we can bind it to our models like this. So this attribute who is rendered there. So again, it's really a similar concept. And now I would like to compare React and Polymer libraries. At first, React uses Virtual DOM, which is a way how to render your HTML from your models. So uh, React knows about your models, and every time you change your models, it compares it, and it knows exactly uh, which part of your model has changed and it will render just the smallest part of HTML that needs to be re-rendered. So it knows that you have changed just one value of one input on the page, and it's bound to one element, so it knows that it doesn't need to re-render the rest of the page, it just needs to render the small part, right? Uh, and Polymer uses custom elements, which we have already seen, this is a different approach to the same to the same thing. Next, one of the benefits of React is it has server-side rendering. So if you have a Node.js on your server, uh, on the first load, it will render just a plain HTML file. For example, for um, for Googlebot or for um, for some devices that don't use JavaScript. So you can just render your uh, HTML in Node, and then after the second, uh, after the page is rendered, it will bind it again to JavaScript. So the sec if if you will call some action on the server, it will it will go through AJAX and just it will just just use the JavaScript. 
because this is uh, because Polymer is just a client library. It doesn't have it, it is just an HTML, so it doesn't have to do anything with the server. So this is again this is a really different concept because uh, with Polymer, you can define your own elements and use it uh, between your projects. It is just plain uh, HTML or plain uh, elements, but React has this benefit. And uh, if you are using React, you have probably heard uh, about Flux, which is a way how to use um, your data in React application. It's a preferred preferred way how to render, render uh, the data, how to flow the data, because there is a one single point where all, all your data flow, so you know where exactly it was, um, where the data came from. And Polymer uses two-way data binding, which is better, for example, for rich forms. So, for example, you have one input uh, bound to to some small component or something like that, but all it's encapsulated. So the the way how Polymer uh, works with data is uh, two-way data binding, but you can use the one-way data flow for whole for whole your application. So for communication between these elements, you can use the one-way data flow. Again, you can use React with Polymer together. There is a there is a React Polymer library. So if you if you are familiar with React, you can see that you can use paper input, which is Polymer element, with the same way how we use normal element. So you can you can use it without problems. Or the second way how to use it together is just render, for example, the um, Google Map element which doesn't have any input or any data that needs to be changed. You just set the attributes to the element, and each time you change the data from React, it will re-render the Polymer element. So you can use it if, if you don't have any, um, any rich components with Polymer. And now I'm going to look at same concept, how they are solved in these libraries. So we are going to start with DOM. Uh, this is uh, Angular uses a normal DOM. So as you know, it uses normal DOM as we use it without problems. But you know the. Uh, but we have seen that you can use the video element, which uses the shadow DOM which is way how Polymer uses DOM. So this is another, this is just a, a input type range. And this is also the shadow DOM of the element. So you can see it's rendered with DOMs, but it's all encapsulated and you don't have problems that your DOM affects the rest of your page. And React uses the virtual DOM. Again, the concept is that it, from your d data is the source of your truth, and from the data, the rest of the page is rendered, and you define how to render it. How these libraries work with DOM updates? Angular has watch. If you are using Angular, you probably know how it works. So it watches your data, and if something has changed, it will it will let you know, and it will render again the HTML. With Polymer, you can set uh, observer fun functions on your data, and uh, and then change the DOM. So you you set your your observers, and React uses tree comparison, which means that it will it will go f deep for your data, for your model, and then it will compare just the smallest part. So, as I have already mentioned, it will re-render just the smallest one, smallest part of your application. Uh, let's move to the CSS. Uh, Angular uses normal CSS styles, 
but as you know, there are problems that if you define your component, you need to use uh, CSS uh, selectors for your component because otherwise it would affect the rest of your page. For example, if you would want to style input element inside your uh, uh, component in Angular, it will affect the rest of your page. So you need to you need to create separate selectors, and then it's it's really difficult to know what's going on. But with Polymer, you have uh, styles that that are bound to the component, so but they don't affect the rest of your page. So if you change the input element inside your Polymer element, it will affect only the one input, exactly one, not the rest of your page. So you can you can download and use um, Polymer elements from several sources, and it you can insert it on the same page, and it works without problems. And uh, React has one way how to uh, another way how to solve this problem, because uh, you can write uh, your CSS in a JavaScript style, so it's a camel case style of writing uh, CSS, but it is compiled uh, to inline styles. But yeah, it's the same, it's the another, another way how to solve the problem with, the, with CSS affecting the rest of your page. So now I'm going to talk about templates. Angular uses uh, three ways how to define your templates. It uses, you can use HTML string, you can use uh, script text, or you can use external files. Mm. But Polymer uses, uh, again, W3C standard template tag, which, is, which has this reason so you can, you can mm, render the content of your element. So it's standard and it in the future, it should be implemented by every browser. And React uses JSX, which is, uh, as we have already seen, which is a way how to write your own um, HTML in JavaScript. But it's actually, it's not HTML. It's just looking as an HTML. Uh, and now, I will show you how to render the content of the tag. So for example, if you have some element and you want to insert other tags or just text or something like that inside, uh, Angular uses a term which is called transcription. It's a way how to bind the content of the element to, the, to your template, to your Angular template. Polymer uses a content tag, which also is a standard how to render the, these things. And Poly uh, React uses a uh, property uh, from your uh, React class, which is uh, called children. So in the children property, you have uh, all your HTML that was, that was declared in the element. Uh, now I, I will tell you about that data binding. Angular uses two-way data binding by default, but you can also use one-way data binding, which is now preferred because, uh, because it is much more clear how the data flows. But you can also use the two-way data binding, which is better for sm small separated parts of your applications. For example, if you have like a rich uh, credit card element or something like that, or just a small component which needs a validation or stuff like that. You can use two-way data binding, but you can use one-way data binding for, for the flow of your whole application. And again, there is a way how to, how Angular uh, watches the data, which is, uh, which is called watch. With Polymer, you can also use two-way data binding. It's also preferred for small components, but Polymer doesn't say how you should render the whole data for your page. So it doesn't say uh, just, for example, you can use Angular or React for your whole data application and use Polymer just for small parts of, of your application as a uh, Google Map imp, uh, element or uh, just credit card input or stuff like that. 
And also there is a third thing, which is called object observe, which is also standard. Uh, and Polymer uses uh, polyfill if the browser doesn't use it, and it is, which is a standard way how to say uh, by JavaScript that the content of the object has changed. So it's a native thing. And yeah, React uses the flux, which is, which is an architectural style, how to define that data flow. You have dispatchers, uh, stores, and so on. So if you are using React, you, you're probably using the Flux. But again, you can use Flux with Angular and also with Polymer. Now we are moving to lifecycle. Lifecycle of the component in Angular works that it's synchronous. So it means um, when, you, when you load the page, Angular goes through the, the template, it compiles it, and it inserts uh, DOM markers, where are your directives, and it will insert the, the, the content of your, of your element, of your directive, to the right place. Polymer, again, it is asynchronous, so it uses the same way as any other elements, so, for example, if you insert new element to the page, you have, um, you have events. For example, you can say, when my document is ready, load this, or when my document is ready, insert this. So it's the same um, if you have used jQuery, you probably know that you need, to, you need to wait until the document is ready. So this is the same. You, uh, Polymer says, says you that your element is ready on the page and you can change the actual data. And React works that it will mount your component. It has, um, it ha has special, special uh, methods that will let you know if your component is mount and then it will update if you change the data. So, if you are using one of the frameworks like Angular or React, we are probably using some kind of components in our application, or it's better way how to build big applications, because we, when you have small components, you have uh, encapsulation, you have a way how to uh, configure these components, you, you have the standard, this, standardized way how to communicate between these components. So mm, if you are using Angular or Polymer or any, uh, Angular or React or any other MVC framework, uh, you should probably start thinking how, if you can use Polymer for stuff like, mm, for example, Google Map element or some special element, or if you would like to use material design on your page, it's uh, really simple to use it with Polymer. I would also like to mention that tomorrow I will have a workshop, so if you know more about the Polymer, if you want to try build some simple application in Polymer, just bring your laptop, uh, download Polymer Starter Kit, which is on the internet, and it will be in a community hall tomorrow at 4 p.m. So if you are interested, yeah, you can join us. And thank you for your attention. Okay, so uh, any questions, guys? We have like seven minutes. Raise your hand, don't be afraid. Okay, I see one. Uh, thank you for a great presentation. So, uh, in your opinion, uh, which framework or co combination of these frameworks you would use for application in general? Yeah, yeah it, I think it really depends on your application. So, for example, if you have some, if you have, if you have already, for example, Angular applications with heavy models, with lots of dialogues and stuff like that, it will be pr probably better for you to stay with Angular. But for example, if you have, um, so if you are using like Google Map components or Google Map things, or if you are using a lot of components, a lot of 
things that are same to your projects. You can build your own elements, a set of elements, which can be shared between the projects. Uh, yeah, and it really depends. For example, if you are building uh, mobile web applications, it, with Polymer, you have the material design, but if you would like to use it with Angular and Polymer together, it will download a lot of stuff. So, it, yeah, you, you need to measure your application. And, for example, I think it's a, uh, the combination of MVC framework and Polymer is good for your administration, for example, or for, like, really rich forms or really rich hmm, components, like when your web is separated into several components. Yeah, it really needs on your application. And I think you should start, use Polymer, look at the elements. If you have something similar in your application, let's play with it, for example, and then decide. Yeah. OK, so any other questions? OK. I have and Uh, hi, uh, I have a small question. Is it possible to use Polymer with uh, Dojo library? Thanks. Uh, Dojo. Yeah, I, I have no experience with this, but I think it's possible. Mm, it depends how you use the, the, your Dojo library, uh, because I think it's it's uh, same concept how to work with DOM. For example, with with Polymer, uh, it will render your HTML, so there is no need how to how to uh, touch to your to your elements. There, there there is a special way how to how to work with the elements inside your element. Uh, but yeah, you can I think you can use it as two separate libraries. Uh, use Polymer for your components and um, Dojo for the rest of your frame uh, rest of your application. So it that that doesn't sh there shouldn't be any problems with it. Okay, so any okay, I see. People start thinking. Hi, my question is: uh, when you use a Polymer component provided by somebody else through a library, is there any way to customize its look and feel through some kind of CSS or something like that? Yeah, uh, Polymer uses uh, CSS variables, which is. Uh, yeah, I will show it tomorrow on the workshop. So basically, you can define your own um, CSS variables. For example, uh, the main color of your page or um, color for your buttons and stuff like that. And it it can be used by the element. Yeah, obviously, it depends on the element. If it has been right wrote in a good way, so it. If it depends, if it uses these variables, it's really easy to use it. Uh, so yeah, Polymer has uh, you can use uh, CSS variables and CSS mixins, which is same as SAS mixins. So you can use a set of CSS properties and uh, configure it outside of the element and use it in the element. So there is a way, but yeah, it depends how the how the component uh, has been built. Because if it doesn't super support the uh, CSS variables, you cannot use it. But you can you can you can update the component and uh, force it to use these CSS variables. And uh, if they don't have its own special support for those variables, sorry, you, sorry. So in case they don't support that uh, those variables. Can you influence uh, the shadow DOM directly through your code? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You there can. is a way. There is a special uh, d uh, slash deep slash selector that you can ch change the content of the element exactly. But yeah, it 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 says that yeah, if you should do it if you know what uh, you are doing, but you shouldn't do it. But yeah. Obviously, if there is no way how to change, if there is no other way how to change the color of the component, you can use these things. Okay, thanks.